Welcome back everybody. This is Steve and today we're going to play around with some more command line tools for Linux. Today is all about process exploration. And if you thought we were going to stop at the top, you're wrong. We're going all the way to the bottom. So stick around and let's see what's up. Oh, and by the way, down below the screen here, there is a whole bunch of buttons like comment, subscribe, join stuff in the description stuff about how to install these tools. I'm going to show you about all of it's down below. So click it, scroll it, look at it, love it. It's a fantastic thing to do. See you after the break. Do you want a free Raspberry Pi Pico? PCBWay is sponsoring a Raspberry Pi Pico contest. Share a project and get a new one for free. Any submission between 419 and 619 gets you a free Pi Pico. If you're one of the top 10, you also could win a Raspberry Pi 4 4 gig model and a $100 coupon. Check out the link in the description. Okay, folks, today we're going to play around on a Raspberry Pi. This little utility that you see on the screen is called NeoFetch, and this is just a neat way of seeing what machine you're on. I move around from different operating systems and different machines in different states, in different countries. All day long, it's what I do. And this is a quick way to see what kind of machine I'm working with. As you can see, there's a great big Raspberry Pi logo, so this must be a Raspberry Pi, but also it will tell you that this is a Raspberry Pi Model 4B Revision 1.1, which might be important when you're installing some software in the future that may or may not be compatible with the Model 4 or may not be compatible with the Model 4B or may not be compatible with revision 1.1 of this board. It also tells me that this is a 4 meg board and that I have 64 megs of memory available and that the CPU is 1.5 gigahertz and I'm running the ZSH shell and I'm over a terminal and all kinds of other stuff. One thing that this really doesn't tell me is how many cores that I have. Oh, yep, it does. Right next to CPU, it says BCM2711, and then it says 4. So this is a 4-core machine. That is fantastic stuff, but all it tells you is how capable the machine is, not what's really going on. So we'll take a little bit of a further step down, and we'll look at what we used to do way back when. What you could do way back when to see what was going on in your machine and why it was so slow, if you could even log in because of how slow it was, is you would type W to see who is on the machine. Okay, and W tells you a couple of useful things. It tells you that the user Pi is logged in, and that happens to be me, and that the machine has been up for seven minutes getting ready to get this video recorded, and that there is one user, and then it tells you this fancy thing called a load average, and the load average is what has happened on your machine in the last one minute, five minute, and 15 minute periods. And so you can kind of get an idea of how busy your machine is and how long it has been as busy as it is. So as an example, this machine is at a 0 0.07 load average. And with a four core machine, that's pretty good. The rule of thumb today is that it shouldn't be any higher than the number of cores you have. This is a four core machine. The load average in the last minute should never be higher than four. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. You can tell me all about it in the comments down below. But this is what everybody that I work with on a routine daily basis says. I personally don't think a machine should be that busy. That's just me. I have seen machines, however, that have been up in like the 25 range on a single core. So it really just depends on what your tolerance is, what your threshold is, what your own personal duty cycle plan is for your own server environment or workstation environment. So tailor this to your needs and to how you feel about things in your world. Totally customizable, not a problem. What this tool, this W tool does not tell you is what the actual processes are. So the next thing up is to run your process list. And I have this muscle memory from many years of doing this where I just do PSAUXWW. I don't even know what half of this stuff means anymore, but it gives me this kind of view. And this is the view that I like to see. And now I can see that there are a bunch of tools running and each of these columns means something different. Let's see if they're nice enough to give us column headings at the top. All right, so we have which user did what. We have the process ID, so you can manipulate the process. We have how much CPU the process is using, which is very nice. We have how much 
memory this the process is using, and a couple of other things, which TTY it's on, stat, start time, the, the start of the process, the time of the process. You can see from before the machine's been up for seven minutes, so the start of the init process was seven minutes ago. There's a kind of a one-for-one -one match there, huh? Wonder why that is. So there's some useful information here, and you can do some stuff with this if you know a whole bunch of the rest of the tools, but we've come a long way, and by we've come a long way, I mean like since like 1970-something to 1990-something, and there's a tool out called Top, and I'm sure that a lot of people have used Top, and you can see that the, the output, the view, is very, very similar. There's a couple of additional things that Top gives you, in addition to the load average at the top of the screen and the list of processes and who owns them and the process ID and all that stuff, what this is doing is it will also tell you the amount of memory in use, the amount of memory free, the amount of swap space in use and the amount of swap space free, which is virtual memory, which is using your disk to emulate RAM to give you more system RAM. And then it will tell you all of the processes that are running and this will update itself all the time so that you can see what's going on. What I do with top is usually I throw away the first screen that comes up and I wait for that first refresh. And at that first screen that comes up, you're basically getting how much processor power it took to launch top, which isn't really all that useful because top wasn't the thing that was running that had you concerned because it wasn't running until you ran it, right? You following along with that? Okay, so we get to this screen here and then it starts refreshing itself and now I can tell that this machine, which is doing nothing but showing you top, is using almost all of its resources to show you top, and it's bored. Great. That's the end of top. Let's get out of top. Hit the Q key, and you're out of top. Okay, so the next thing that we did after top, we moved a couple more years into the future, and we wanted to use color, because color's a thing, and we have the ability to do a little bit better of a screen layout, and computers started coming with multiple cores, and Top couldn't really cut it because you couldn't tell which core was doing what. So there is HTOP, and HTOP is the new hotness, and you'll see it right away when it launches. It's colorful. Processes have colors. You still see the same load average, you see the same uptime. You can see now the number of cores and how busy they are, and you can see the amount of memory, and you can see the amount of swap, and it's in bar graph format. And you can press a whole bunch of function keys that are outlined down the bottom of the screen. F1 for help, F2 for setup. Um, so F1 for help. There's your help screen. And it tells you all kinds of stuff that you can do, which is really friendly to have something like this in hand. So you don't have to like run HTOP, want to make a change to your system, not know how to do it. Your system's busy and overloaded. Exit HTOP, go lo launch MAN or go launch a web browser and do some research or heaven forbid, go look in a book. Um, we don't do books anymore. Um, and now you're right here in the help screen and you have all of the help. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do in the help screen. And then you just press escape to get back out of the help screen. One of the things that you can do at the command line, or you can do in top, or you can do in H top is you can change the nice of a process, which is how nice it interacts with the rest of the system. And so if you have a process that you know is going to consume a lot of CPU power and take a long amount of time, and you don't really care how long it takes, say you're importing a large log file into a log parser of some kind, and you know it's going to take a while and you don't really care, but you also don't want it to bring your machine down, you can change the nice of that process so that it will run slower and consume less resources. I have not had to do that for quite a long time. We are in an era of cloud computing and cheap and affordable computers. And if there's something like that that you want to do, most of the time you just spin up another machine and do it and let it handle it. And don't even worry about uh, CPU affinity or nice or things along those lines. So that is top. And you can see that it's... Uh, kind of a bored machine right now. If I was editing a video or I was transferring files or I was doing something a little more processor intensive, it would trickle all across all of those bar graphs at the top and it would look pretty neat. So that is HTOP. Okay, next up is an interesting one that is called BPyTOP. And I don't know why it's called B, but the Py is for Python and the top is for the fact that this is another 
top like thing and this one's pretty neat this came out of something called bash top which might be where the b came from but anyway it has been included in debian since debian 11 this is a raspberry pi machine once again and it is based off of debian so let's see if it made it over to the raspberry pi repos so you're supposed to be able to just do sudo apt install b pi top and we are unable to find it because it didn't make it over to the Raspberry Pi logo, Raspberry Pi repositories. This might be because this is the light version, the server version of Raspbian OS and not the full version. Not to worry. Let's go figure out how to get the full install done. Okay, a couple of commands to get out of the way to get this thing installed. First up, we need to add the repository. So there is a command to add the repository. This stuff will all be linked in the description below that has been done. Next, we need to get the key for the repository. So let's do that. That has been done and it even says, okay. And then the next thing we need to do is update the repositories on disk. Let's do that. And if you remember from my last video on TO's Linux Shack, which I will link up above, there is a uh, real quick part at the end where I install uh, ZSH as my default shell and I install oh my ZSH as a plugin mm -hmm. manager and I install uh, liquid prompt. So one of the things you can see right away with liquid prompt is that this last process took 23 seconds. That's one of the reasons why I like liquid prompt. It also tells me my current directory, my current user and my host name. So those are all fantastic things. Um, now we're going to do something even more interesting that you can do with um, ZSH and oh my ZSH plugins. I'm gonna type in sudo, I'm gonna spell it properly. I'm gonna press the up arrow and it's gonna cycle through all of the things that begin with the word sudo instead of just going up the ladder. So there's sudo app install bpytop. It has found it, let's run it. All right, I got a quick phone call while all that was happening so you might've missed some of the boring package installation stuff. That's okay, we all know who was on the phone. Um, it has finished installing, it took one minute, 10 seconds to install. Let's take a look and see what it looks like. B-P-Y-T-O-P. And I gotta be in the window when I type that in, hang on. B P Y T O P. Okay. And I missed the B. B P Y T O P. Third time's the charm, right? And oh, look at this. This is pretty snazzy. This is pretty sexy. I like this. We have got CPU graph over time in the upper left. We have disk IO and swap information on screen. We have a memory graph that is also uh, graphed over time. And it's, it's interesting that it's going from... <laughs> What are my directions? It's going from right to left instead of left to right. Uh, it also has network traffic and it has all of your uh, process list. And if you look really carefully, I don't know if it's gonna come across on the screen all that well, but if you look very carefully, the colors on the process list are fading down to the, the lower intensity processes are lower intensity colors and the higher intensity processes are higher intensity colors. This is pretty neat. I like this. So I'm pretty impressed with this. And you can do all of the same stuff. You can select processes. You can uh, press enter on them to see what's going on with them. Looks like you're gonna get a little chart of memory usage. So ZSH is using four and a half megs of memory and the parent of ZSH is SSH because I am remote controlling this Raspberry Pi from the machine that I'm doing the video recording on. That is pretty neat. You can up and down to pick another process and Oh, it is mouse enabled. I'm just double clicking on these guys and switching between them. That's pretty slick. And then you can get info and you can terminate and you can kill. That is just awesome. And currently my processor, as you can see, is switching between 600 megahertz and 1.5 gigahertz because not only is it bored, it is so bored that it's going to sleep. So this is a pretty neat little tool. I like this. I'm going to probably use this a lot more in my... Uh, day-to-day -day arsenal of weapons. Cool. So hit Q to get back out of that. And we sat inside of that and just stared at it for a minute and 56 seconds, almost two minutes of awesome right there. Let's clear the screen 
and get after the next one. Okay, so this next one does not run on Raspberry Pi, but I still wanna show it to you anyway. I'm gonna show it to you in a Mac OS terminal. So we have on your screen bpytop from the last portion of the video, and you can see that this machine is a 1.7 gigahertz i7, eighth gen instead of a Raspberry Pi, and it is an eight core machine. So we've got eight different CPUs running. And this is the machine I'm running OBS on. So you can see that OBS is taking up a whopping 10% CPU while it is doing this thing. So we will flip back and forth between these two windows while we're doing the thing that we're doing and see what we can see. Okay, so for a Mac OS install, it has a built-in package that uses the Homebrew Package Manager. So let's tap that cask, brew tap Clement Sang. I think that's how you pronounce that slash bottom and now we're doing a download 509 bytes 9k and it is finished cpu got a little bit of love there for a minute let's do brew install bottom and it is installing now and that is all done and let's run bottom and it's not found slash user local seller bottom bin bottom btm btm was the command okay so here is btm this one is also colorful and has a scrolling right to left history based uh, cpu usage chart and it has the same thing for RAM and it has the same thing for network. This is also pretty neat. Um, let's see, is there, there is mouse support in this. What is iTerm doing? So I can pick it. All right, we can click on column names to sort by name. So I want to sort by what is the most boring CPU thing going on right now, and the most boring CPU thing is accounts D on this machine. So there you have it. This is bottom. Okay, folks, there you go. That is process snooping uh, through the ages. We started out with plain old command line tools that were built into Unix operating systems, and then we started graduating up the, the tree. We did W, which is kind of not really that big of a deal, but uh, tells you who's logged in and what your CPU stack looks like, your load averages look like over the last one, five, 15 minutes, and then PS so that you can manipulate those processes. Then we moved on to top, then we moved to H top, then we moved to bash top, which became B pi top, and then we moved to bottom. So let me know what you think about all of these different tools in the comments down below. Let me know what you think the favorite one of yours is. Um, my favorite one is the BPI top one. I think that one just looks snazzy. So we will see you in the next one. Thanks for being awesome.